Hey, I was about to tell you I will never come to your program no, anymore. No, no, no. If you don't deliver. If you don't deliver. Look, look, look. Uh, where are we? We're here. And there we have two... I'm going to sell tomorrow. I have two potential dates that we're looking at. We're just playing tell around. Me, with. Tell me, tell me. And, we uh, are looking we'll pick one at of those. Budapest, either May the 1st okay. or immediately after the, um, the coronation. You tell me when you come and I will receive you yeah. the very proper... How is the Hungarian foreign minister, Peter uh, Sciato? Uh, minister, good to see you. We've got lots yeah, to talk about. Yeah, right. But before we get to what we're going to talk about elsewhere, let's just talk about this attack in um, uh, the Kremlin. Do you think it was the Ukrainians? Look, Richard, I have no idea. I have no idea what have happened, but I know one thing for sure that the longer this war takes, the more of such kind of events can take place. And the more of such kind of events take place, the bigger the risk of escalation is. So as a representative of a neighboring country, which is uh, being in danger because of a potential escalation, I urge, I urge this war to be stopped as soon as possible. Once it is being stopped, such kind of events don't take place and we have a bigger chance for saving lives of the people. But the Hungarian government has been less than full-throated in its support of NATO and the military activity, by your, by your own admission, when we've spoken before. Sure. Uh, isn't that simply weakening the position? That NATO's in this all the way now and you're not. Now, come on. Uh, there has been a decision made by uh, the NATO Council, the foreign ministers. You're including saying, yourselves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, saying that NATO is not party to the conflict and we have to do our best in order to prevent NATO from uh, becoming part of the conflict and co coming into direct confrontation with the Russian Federation. So we stick to this decision of NATO and I hope that this decision will uh, be in force in the future as well because once again if NATO if NATO gets directly involved into this conflict that brings the threat of the outbreak of the Third World War and this is right. something that neither of us would want. But time so, to far, so far the, the, this country has been has not involved itself in the military side, including the transshipment yeah, right. or overflight. Right. You have as, agreed with all the sanctions that have been put forward, but at a price, at a price. Yeah. You've extracted a price yeah. for agreeing, and you're now being difficult about the possibility of, fin, uh, of Sweden joining NATO. So it, the effect is you look like you're being half-hearted. Look, this uh, country and the people in this country have paid an extremely high price for this war. There's a skyrocketing inflation, skyrocketing energy prices, skyrocketing food prices in this country. And we have made our best in order to help the Ukrainian people in this war. We have received more than a million refugees in this country. Right. More than 1,300 schools and kindergartens are enrolling Ukrainian kids and students. We have done our best in order to help the Ukrainian people. But one thing we are not going to do, we would never make any kind of step which would bring a bigger risk of a potential escalation. Please understand that as a neighboring country and as a member of a nation, members of which are dying in this conflict, we do our best in order to stop this war. Let okay? us this, turn, is, this is the most important issue. Let us turn to matters domestic. Okay. The parliament today uh, passed judicial reforms after huge pressure it from is. the EU. The EU Commission says it's not enough. We'll get your reaction. Nothing, we'll nothing is enough. We'll you know. get your <laughs> reaction in, in a moment yeah. because, first of all, wherever we look, it seems the Hungarian government is at odds with the EU. Every family has its problems, and in the EU family of nations, the problem child is Hungary. Relations with Brussels began to sour following the election of Prime Minister Viktor Orban in 2010. In its first few years, his right-wing government passed dozens of laws that radically changed the country's constitutional makeup. Brussels says the reforms undermine core European values. They threaten the independence of Hungary's judiciary by politicizing the appointment of judges. The changes jeopardize the freedom of press by taking control of the state media and putting ownership of other news outlets in the hands of government-friendly entities. And more recently, they've targeted the LGBT community, effectively banning adoption for same-sex couples. 
Leaders in Brussels have watched on with dismay. The Hungarian bill is a shame. It goes against all the values, the fundamental values of the European Union. The EU is piling the pressure on the Orban government to reverse course. And the stakes for Hungary are very high. Brussels is withholding about $15 billion in funds, the equivalent of roughly one-tenth of the country's entire annual GDP. The European Union is, is a club with rules. Uh, you can get access to financing, and that's good, that's to the benefit of everyone, but you can not just pick and choose. With such a threat bearing down, there have been some signs of progress. Hungary says it's nearing an agreement to unlock the frozen EU funds. But new arguments over Hungary's treatment of migrants and the Orban's government's ties to Russia mean this family feud is unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Now, the foreign minister is still with me. Um, all right, Hungary's democracy. I'm not for a moment expecting you're going to say, you're right, Richard. We are anti-democratic. We have changed things. I don't think you're going to say that for a moment. But when The Economist says how Viktor Orban hollowed out Hungary's democracy, the parliament describes you as an electoral autocracy. Others say you are a partly free country. I mean, are they all wrong? Uh, they insult us. They insult us on a continuous basis, Richard, I have to tell you, because I, I see, I, I understand their problem. Their problem is, I think, that here there is a government which is clearly anti-mainstream. This is a right-wing government, this is a Christian democratic government, this is a very patriotic government. This government goes against international liberal mainstream on many important uh, issues. And in the meantime, this government is successful. Because don't forget one thing, winning an election is very complicated, but winning elections in four uh, continuous occasion, oh, the huge gap, well, the I'm huge glad, gap, it's, well, it's I'm very glad complicated you, to I'm do I'm glad that. you mentioned about winning elections because yeah. the OSCE says that in this country you fail to provide a level playing field, there's significant media bias towards the ruling for the ruling party, misstate, um, a misuse of state resources and a lack of transparency with a bias and lack of balance. With all my due respect, I would like to invite you to a... Uh, no, well, let's say to, to an exploration. And, and, and if, you look at, if you look at the reports, if you look at the reports of OSCE, there's a tendency. Whenever a rightist party wins an election, you read such kind of report. Whenever a liberal party wins an election, everything was fair, everything was fine, everything was clean, everything was transparent. So this is a clearly a politically biased statement. The international Are you against everybody? I mean, you no, seem no, to be no, against no. Come on. the yeah. MEPs, the OECD, yeah, the OSCE. What, what OECD? Well, the OECD. I'm <laughs> what, what do they say? They Tell say that Hungary has to make significant progress in addressing recommendations on bribery and corruption. Now, you are the worst country in the EU, number 27, on transparency, let's, according uh, to Transparency International. Uh, let, let's, let's, okay. let's, um, Another organization? Uh, I'm serious. Let's uh, speak, let's speak uh, about the facts because it, it, it's very, very important. Look, what I understand is that if there is a country with a clear growth path regarding all kinds of difficulties, including COVID, including the war in the neighborhood, including not receiving the EU funds. We are still on a growth path. The economy is growing year by year. We break the records of investment year by year. Would you think it would be possible if there was a systematic corruption? In case there's a systematic corruption, there's no growth. Investors are not coming. They don't bring their money here. Right. So this is a clear accusation. Again, right. as, as the, you have been here for a long time. Why haven't you asked the investors here, the big companies coming from Germany, France, US, whatever, did, they, did they experience something said, like this? But they say no. Right. That's why they invest. If, if, if there was a systematic corruption here in Hungary, they wouldn't reinvest in this country. So the OECD Do you agree not, with me? So, well, let's move to another subject. <laughs> if we may. You, you, um, the, are you prepared to condemn tonight what? the new anti-gay law in Uganda, which has been passed by the parliament, which has the most draconian, as you'll know, uh, you'll, you know, has the most draconian punishments, including the death sentence in certain circumstances. So, Minister, recognizing that your own party and government has had some issues with this, are you prepared to come out clearly tonight and ask the president of Uganda not to sign that bill? Uh, I have not been aware uh, of this law, but what you say, I can give you the following reaction. If anybody is being threatened 
for believing in something, belonging to any kind of community, falling in love with anyone. If he or she is being threatened for that, even with a death uh, penalty, I definitely do condemn. Because here in this country, regardless whoever you fall in love with, regardless what kind of community uh, uh, you uh, belong to, you are safe and you are safe by the Constitution. And as long as this government is in place, no one has to be feared, no one has to be afraid belonging to any community, falling in love with anyone. Right. Okay. So, what did you mean in a speech last week when you talked about ungodly forces? Uh, and this week. Oh, this week, but just show the weeks yesterday. Goes, so, yesterday was it really? It was just there we go. Just show, show. You, you taught you you're opening a, um, a school, uh, a religious school, and and you said you were against NGOs and ungod or certain ones and ungodly forces. Does this doesn't this suggest if you're not a, a religious believer, then somehow you don't fit in? No, no, in? no. no I, I didn't mean that. What I have meant uh, was the following: there are clear tendencies uh, which condemn. Uh, the religious organizations which think that being religious is being kind of retrograde, which, say, which who say that being religious is something bad. Right. That's what I meant. Because I, you know, I'm a believer. I do believe that religion is very important and religion must be respected. And you should know, uh, we should be aware of one issue for sure, that Christianity, unfortunately, became the most persecuted religion on earth. And you know, this country has a more than a thousand year long Christian statehood. So we really right. do feel responsible for the Christian communities all over the world who are under persecution. And we are going to continue to help them as it was recognized by His Holiness who has visited us during last weekend. Where indeed you were privileged to welcome him off the plane. Sure, sure. What a wonderful view. Yeah, you'll what see a it? magnificent view it is here. You have a good taste that you came here. Well, I'm very glad you invited <laughs> me to, to come you, here. Richard. And of course, Great we were you. delighted to come here and, and, and to be with you. There's the pictures of you and the Pope. Thank yeah, you well, very much. Do for, it on more occasions. Uh, well, <laughs> We look forward to the next occasion. All right. Let us say that. Okay. I've, okay. Eaten, I've eaten more noodles than I think is honest or just. I hope you enjoyed. And the goulash is great. We've Ooh. got some desserts there. Thank you.